Hey guys, what's up? I'm the Original Gamer, and today I'm gonna be talking about something a bit controversial. And last time I did that, you can see that the results were an absolute success. Now today, um, if you read the title, you already know I'm gonna be talking about Pokemon. And I'm pretty sure you already know, also by the title, what exactly I'm gonna be talking about. So Pokemon Sword and Shield. Doesn't look good at all. There have been a lot of issues revolving around it the past since it was shown off at E3. And I, for one, am not too fond of what they're doing with it. Now at E3, the Nintendo Treehouse Direct, they showed off uh, some Pokemon Sword and Shield gameplay. And we got to see more of how the game plays, how open world sort of thing um, transcribes into Pokemon. I was super excited for the game. I was really excited for it when they first showed off the trailer because it was a next-gen, full-fledged Pokemon game for the Nintendo Switch, and that sounds that sounds like a fantastic idea. And it's open world, so that sounds amazing. But the more I saw the game, and with more news and coverage on it coming out, I am becoming less and less excited for the game. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the issues with the game, and my opinions. Now before we jump into the video, these are going to be my opinions on the game. So if I say something that you don't agree with, don't go typing an entire freaking essay down in the comment section below. Like I said, this is my opinion. If you have a different opinion, that's cool. All right, I respect that. That's awesome. But like this is my opinion, I'm able to express it and that's what I'm doing. So, if you don't agree, oh well. If you type an entire essay, I'm I don't read those. If you look at my Smash Bros as a poor video, I got like freaking five paragraph comments on my freaking video and guess how many of them I read? Zero. So just get out that out of the way if you feel like typing an essay will help you clear your mind, go right ahead, but I'm not gonna read them. No, there's a lot of info that's come out and the one thing that people have been uh, shaken up over uh, on the internet is the fact that the game just visually does not look good at all. But it just doesn't look like a very good game. Now, one common thing you see all over the internet is people comparing it to uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild screenshots because they're both fairly similar, you know, play styles, open world, you know. Except, you know, Breath of the Wild is more in depth, but it's still open world. And one of the most popular ones that I've seen around the internet is uh, the one where they're comparing the textures of the tree of this one tree to textures of trees in Breath of the Wild. And I find this actually mind boggling because it's not just the tree in the image. Look at the floor. Look at the textures in the grass. It's just a flat surface. While well, Breath of the Wild, you have individual strands of glass, uh, like patches of grass, and it looks very good. And I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet that the world of Breath of the Wild is a whole lot bigger than Sword and Shield. Um, and I don't understand how, as mainline game developers, you're not like some sort of third-party developer. You're a mainline developer, and you're selling stuff like this to the customers who have been excited for this sort of thing for a long time. And this just isn't acceptable. You know, we have those like hardcore Pokemon fans that like will agree with anything Pokemon-related, and they're defending like, oh no, the game it's still in its demo. If it's still in its demo, you know, we still have a few more months. How do you think they're going to improve this entire world within, I don't know, when does it come out? Three months? And I really don't think they'll, it'll change much from what we're seeing here and what we saw in the, in the, the Nintendo Treehouse. And this isn't, this isn't acceptable. As I, I understand it's their first take on this and they have never done anything like this before. But Breath of the Wild has never done an open world like this before, and they already they nailed it. They nailed it perfectly. It's a beautiful game. Can't use the excuse that it's cell, cell shaded, because Sword and Shield is a cartoon looking game as well. And I I just don't understand why they think this is acceptable. And it's not only just the visuals, just the base game content is extremely lacking. There are about 800 plus over 800 Pokemon in the Pokemon world, and not all of them are in this game. They're removing Pokemon to make the experience of using the Pokemon in the game more unique. Junichi Masuda, 
the producer of Pokemon Sword and Shield, said there are a couple of different parts to thinking behind it. But really the biggest reason for it is just the sheer number of Pokemon. We already have well over 800 Pokemon species and there's going to be more added in these games. And now that they're on Nintendo Switch, we're creating it with much higher fidelity with higher quality animations. Now let me tell you where that's extremely false. During the gameplay of Pokemon Sword and Shield, we were shown a lot of battle scenes with the Pokemon. And you know, it looks just like Sun, Sun and Moon, looks just like X and Y. They're talking about all these animations but really the only new animations they're adding is for the new Pokemon that they haven't made yet. And they've really just ported animations from the older games to the newer ones and just making newer animations for the new Pokemon. And with the addition of Dynamax animations, but that's really it. They're just porting animations over and you know, I, I get, I'm, I'm not a game developer, I'm really in no position to really judge, but as a consumer, uh, viewing this from a consumer standpoint, I really, don't, I was gonna pre-order the game, but now I don't really know if I want to pre-order the game anymore because of all this stuff that's coming out. So here's, let me show you the gameplay. Pokemon Sword and Shield. This video is uploaded by Zavi Hacker. It's called Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, <laughs> high quality animations. And it's a, it's a tweet by Cerebri.net. Cerebri.net, sorry. Um, it says, uh, in an interview with US gamer Junichi M Masuda reaffirms that the sheer volume of high quality animations and desire to balance further resulted in the decision to block transfer of some Pokemon. So, just because of making new animations, we're missing all of some of our favorite Pokemon, which is a huge letdown. And it's high quality animations. Look at it, this is double kick. That's Score Bunny's double kick animation. That, that's great personality for the character. Yeah, look at the Wingle animation. They don't even flap their wings, they're just... It's really disappointing. And, okay, sure, there's grass there. That There's grass there. But that's because that's where the Pokemon spawn. It just, it's not a very great looking game, and... Uh, I feel like... And they're being really lazy about it, they're being really lazy about it, and, uh, you know, also, they're using the 3DS um, the 3DS engine for the game. So that could be another reason why the game doesn't look as good is because using 3DS hardware. There are many, there are many developers that have gone from making games on smaller, um, consoles to making marvelous games on next-gen consoles. For example, Ben Studios, the last game they made was for the PS Vita, and now we have Days Gone. And Days Gone, I don't know if you guys have seen how beautiful that game looks. It looks really nice. So there really can't be any exceptions to what Game Freak is doing here because we've seen it many times before Ben Studios going from small PlayStation portable consoles to the PS4 looking fantastic. And you know, also Breath of the Wild looks fantastic. And I also, I saw on Twitter this one tweet by uh, Ben Twip, the YouTuber, uh, he said, this is so funny to me, one is flat waistline of absolute nothing with low res textures and the other is Breath of the Wild. And he has two screenshot examples of what he's talking about and you clearly see the huge difference here between the two. You know, Breath of the Wild, you see you have a vast, a vast environment with mountains and plants and grass everywhere. And Pokemon just looks like a f kind of a flat surface with just a texture plastered on the ground. And it's not very appealing to look at, especially with that close-up of the grass there that they showed in the official trailer. Jeez, and then someone responded to that tweet saying, Funny, I see a well-crafted first attempt at an HD 3D overworld by a team who's exclusively made low-res handheld games for 20 plus years next to a game whose engine alone was five years in production, only to have triangular grass clipping through rocks. And I'm not gonna put the usernames to the users here because you know it's disrespectful. I'll blur them out so you guys don't know. But like I said earlier, they've made handheld low-res games for 20 plus years. Ben Studios was on the PlayStation, PlayStation 1, PS2, PSP, PS Vita, low-res handheld consoles to making Days Gone on the PS4 and they're not even a mainline they're not even main developers like like Naughty Dog or Insomniac or they're just another small company and it's they made a fantastic looking game 
And within this thread, there's someone saying, exactly, people acting like it's 2004 and the new Halo came out, and oh my freaking god, the graphics are so high quality. Go back to your dude bro shooter. Now, I don't know where that came from. This had nothing to do with shooters. <laughs> I don't know where this had to like go with like 2004 and Halo and dude bro shooters, but he said that. And I responded and I said, I think you forget this game is also on Switch and it's not a dude bro shooter and looks really good. I sent a picture of Super Mario Odyssey because let's be honest, Super Mario Odyssey is a beautiful game. And you know, I think the graphics look way better than Pokemon Sword and Shield. It looks, it's an amazing looking game for the Switch. And um, he said, I think you forget we're five plus months out and it hasn't even had the 17 revisions yet and it still looks completely fine. So I responded with, it does look fine, but it doesn't look good is my point. It's a mainline Nintendo game and it should look great being held up to that standard. Don't settle for mediocrity. All these Pokemon fans are settling for what Game Freak is showing out. What they're showing, we shouldn't accept it. We deserve much better. That's really, that's really all I'm just gonna talk about. I just feel like they're being lazy. It could be better but I don't think they're gonna change anything by the time the game comes out. They're not gonna do anything to fix it. And if they do, that's great. I was wrong, that's fantastic. But I can't imagine them doing that because you know, they know darn well they'll make money if they put the game out how it is right now. They'll make millions of dollars if they put it out right now and that's why they don't care, is because they know they'll profit off of it. Uh, which is um, very unfortunate for us, but from a business standpoint for them, that's great. Um, but yeah, that's all I was really going to talk about. Um, let me know what you guys uh, think down in the comment section below in a respectful manner. In a respectful manner. Don't be mean, please. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm the Original Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Pretty love, pretty love